you're also liable. Mm. You're guilty by participation. Yes, yes, yes. So you shouldn't participate and hope that because mm. I'm not the one that orchestrated this thing, I'm just going to put in my money and take yeah. it out. So by participating as well, you're also liable to some sort of punishment or... Two yeah. million or ten years in prison. The same. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and of course, as I said earlier, we have Miss Uwefa in Jambi, the senior financial analyst of ba- at Bank of Namibia. Hi. Hi, Uwefa. Good afternoon, Tower. Hi. Nice for you to join us today and give us all the information on illegal financial schemes, right? I know it's something that happens more often than we think and to more people than we think, right? I think I know about... Two people it's happened to on separate occasions um, in different, different ways, right? So we're just going to get a little bit of insight on, you know, ways that we can, you know, either avoid it mm-hmm. or what, what, what is, what are illegal financial schemes, right? So this is the first question I have for you, right? So can you provide an overview of the type of illegal financial schemes currently affecting Namibians? Um, thank you, Tower, for having us this afternoon. Um, it's always a pleasure for the Bank of Namibia to mm-hmm. be on this platform and share um, educative information for members of the public. Mm-hmm. Um, so with regards to illegal financial schemes, um, they are defined in our Banking Institutions Act, which mm-hmm. is our legal instrument that we're using to deter illegal financial schemes. Mm. Uh, but in a layman's term, um, I would say um, illegal financial schemes are those uh, nice, promising mm. business opportunities that um, people are lured into participating in. Yeah, They are classified mostly into two categories, mm-hmm. um, one being pyramid schemes. I think a lot of people are familiar with that terminology. Mm-hmm. Yeah whereby people are invited to recruit Mm. a number of people to join. And upon joining, you either, uh, obviously you pay a subscription fee to join, and then you are promised high returns Mm. with little to no risk at all. And the returns are very promising out of this world. And then the other category is what is known as Ponzi schemes. So these are mm. the schemes where um, the, the, they are structured in such a way that the promoter or the owner mm-hmm. receive money from members of the public. We call it deposit taking. And then they promise that you, they're going to take your funds for investment mm. purposes. So you invest a certain amount and then they promise you that um, upon um, participation, you are guaranteed to earn mm. interest. Um, within a short period, actually. Yeah. Um, and this interest can be up to double what you have invested, double your principal mm. amount within 24 hours, for example, <laughs> which is unrealistic yeah. right now. So, yeah, so in a nutshell, that is illegal financial schemes. Mm. But for better legal definition, um, mm. that is contained in our Banking Institutions Act from section 75 up mm-hmm. to 78 for for the for the for the read up i think the one the readers can read more yeah. to understand what what so these are um, these are situations or circumstances that often seem too good to be true and are often right too Absolutely. good to be true yes. yeah and that's how they lure you in with all these like sparkly things and you can yes. get this and get that and as you said very little risk high reward yes which is often a huge sign for like a right like a scam or you know a scheme yeah yeah so are there particular demographic groups that are more targeted by these schemes um, it just depends on the type of scheme, mm. um, but also more so on the promoter, mm. because obviously the promoter or initiator of the scheme would um, have an idea of yeah. who they're targeting. Um, they might have studied a, a, a certain age group, for mm. example, to to ensure that whatever they're coming up with uh, meets the needs mm. of those people. So. You'd find that a promoter could possibly be targeting pensioners. Yeah. And this is really because they are perceived to have limited knowledge on financial products. Mm. So they would then orchestrate something that is appealing to them 
um, such that they are lured into investing maybe their pension money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, even the pension that they get back um, mm. as soon as they retire. We have seen cases where uh, people have actually put all their money in there and lost everything that they had mm. um, saved up all those years when they were employed. Obviously, they also then target students as well. Yes, yes. Um, because they are either fresh graduates or still students mm. and you're trying to make ends meet. And also, yeah. you uh, same with uh, similar to um, pensioners, they also mm. have limited knowledge on financial products because mm. remember this uh, age group, they are not yet employed. They don't really know what what is true yeah. or what is too good to be true. Mm. Um, then obviously they also um, target the unemployed because yes. you're desperate. Yeah. Then they make promises of um, business opportunities mm. online. Here's an opportunity to work online, to work from home, yes. make instant money, etc. So you take the letter that you mm. have and invest it yeah. um, just for you to lose everything actually. Yeah. So they do target almost everyone. I think so. And those yeah. keywords, instant, quick, you know, like yes. all those things. And I was wondering whether, does this one count as an illegal financial scheme? Because I have a son and they get on these online like games, right? Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and I know it's probably not an illegal financial scheme, but it's, they pro so I know his classmates do this thing where they're told, or oh, if you click this, you pay mm -hmm. to click a number of times on the website. Mm -hmm. And when you click say a hundred times, then your money doubles. Yeah. And then is that does that count? It does count. Um, you know, promoters or orchestrators of illegal financial mm. schemes, they use various methods. They use traditional methods of, mm. that is being word of mouth, but we know we're living in a digital world. Yeah. So obviously they would also then also target people through these um, digital yeah. platforms. It just depends on how they package the information. Mm. So, yes, it does. So nobody is safe Pen from, from literally children to pensioners. Everyone yes. but, but is, do, yeah. But we agree that uh, for the children, it's not their money, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not their money, but they have the thing where, you know, you could enter your card into the Apple Pay or yeah. whatever, and then it's already logged into your computer or something, yes. and then they're clicking, clicking, and then massive amounts get deducted. It's yeah. happened to someone I know, and I was wondering, is that does that count as, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. But there is a distinction, a distinction between um, illegal financial schemes mm -hmm. and just normal fraudulent yeah, just, um, yeah. uh, tactics. Mm. Because if someone scams you as an individual to say, um, follow this link, and then mm. you end up giving your banking details, for example, and then next thing you know, um, your money is gone. Yeah. That is not a fa an illegal financial mm. scheme, but rather just a, a fraudulent activity that you ah, must report to yes. the authority. Being so there's the a very, and yeah. also your bank. Yeah, so there's a very like big difference between yes. the two. All right, so how does Bank of Namibia collaborate with other institutions or like law enforcement agencies to address this issue? So the Bank of Namibia is very cognizant of the fact that we we don't we we don't exist in a in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. um, we interact with other institutions, but also with um, individuals alike. Mm -hmm. um, we do partner with the Namibian Police Force um, okay. in most cases that we're dealing with. Um, once we have done our assessments, we do report them to the police mm -hmm. for their further action. Um, but also um, where we find ourselves right now, we we realize that we need to do more in terms of awareness campaign mm. to ensure that uh, members of the public are protected. Yes. So we endeavor to go out there, uh, partner with more institutions, um, other regulators mm. and uh, other financial institutions um, that could possibly uh, spread the message and okay. ensure that members of the public do know how to identify an illegal financial scheme mm. and they are protected from um, these scammers. Okay. So to piggyback on that one, this one is very important for me because I believe in justice. So what legal actions can be taken against individuals or groups found guilty of operating these schemes? Like what are the repercussions? Yeah. So the law is very clear mm. um, in terms of the um, section 92, mm -hmm. subsection 2A of the mm -hmm. Banking Institutions Act. Um, if you are found to have um, 
transgressed the law, mm-hmm. you are liable to um, a fine of two million Namibia dollars oh, okay. or um, imprisonment of mm. um, up to 10 years or oh. both. Okay. The fine and uh, a, a, a jail term. Yeah. So um, uh, worth noting, a mm. promoter can possibly be liable per, for persecution, but mm-hmm. participation as well mm-hmm. um, is also a, an illegal, how should I say it? You're also liable. Mm. You're guilty by participation. Yes, yes, yes. So you shouldn't participate and hope that because mm. I'm not the one that orchestrated this thing, I'm just going to put in my money and take yeah. it out. Um, I didn't do anything. Huh. You ought to know that by participating in a scheme, mm. you're equally um, liable, just like the promoter, because you know what you're doing. Interesting. Um, in most cases, this we call them serial participants. <laughs> yes. Because yeah, yes. they, they join one mm. scheme today, mm. uh, get their money out. Tomorrow they join mm. the next, um, just to ensure that they are the first one to... To, to yeah. get returns before the thing collapses. Yeah, so by participating as well, you're also liable to some sort of punishment or... Two yeah. million or ten years in prison. The same. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that is, if, if anything, that should deter you at all yes. from participating in any of this. So can you tell us more about the current campaigns the Bank of Namibia is running to combat um, illegal financial schemes? So, um, as part of our campaign program, mm-hmm. the one thing that we're doing is this, mm-hmm. uh, me being yeah. here, um, we, we want to make sure that we reach um, all um, targeted mm-hmm. stakeholders by illegal financial schemes, okay. being pensioners, um, young adults, um, students, the unemployed, etc. So, we need to then obviously um, orchestrate a plan that uh, targets mm. or can actually reach um, the uh, diversified demographic. Mm. Um, so we we have then taken an approach to say we're going to go through radio mm-hmm. because you do have um, audiences that yeah. uh, do participate or fall prey to yeah. these schemes. We are going to partner with other institutions like mm-hmm. I have earlier on mentioned to uh, mentioned. Um, we do plan to also um, have some printed material for institutions to hand out. Um, also, we are going to be very active on social media because we know that um, we're in a digital era and majority of the people are now mm. reading what we are informed through social media yeah. and not so much through our printed media anymore. Yeah. So we are still working on the plan and we do hope that uh, by the end of the year, we would have accomplished um, the objective of co- creating yeah. awareness, not just in Namibia, I mean in Vinduk, but across the country, mm. um, through the regions, to ensure that even the anti-selling Kapana mm. do, does understand yeah. um, the in, uh, reca- repercussions of uh, participating in an illegal financial scheme. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Uweta. Like what you guys are doing um, in terms of educating and as you said, reaching a wider audience with radio and, you know, social media, it is a digital era Mm -hmm. and it's a double-edged sword, as you said. Like it's, you know, it's the same digital era that's giving us all the things that are benefiting us, the same one that allows people to fall prey Mm -hmm. um, to all these schemes and, um, you know, so as you're using it for good as well as it's used for evil. So yes, we applaud you on that. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much for the information. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, hopefully we can, where can can everyone get more information um, on this, on illegal financial schemes and, you know, how to combat them and maybe how to assist people around them, family members and all of that? Yeah, so um, the one thing um, members of the public should look Mm. out for maybe for more information, we have a social media page, Mm -hmm. uh, Bank of Namibia, uh, that's our Instagram handle. Mm -hmm. Um, We do post um, information that we wish to disseminate to the Mm -hmm. public. So be on the lookout. We will share um, information on on, on our Instagram page. We'll also partner with uh, other institutions that would target Mm -hmm. um, a specific group of people. I don't now want to divulge because... Mm -hmm. um, um, we then have to finalize our plan before we execute. Mm. But it's just to say that we want to be on the ground 
to do the issue, um, actual campaign as opposed to just doing mm. it over radio and, 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 and TV. So um, if not on the Bank of Namibia website, you can call mm. us. Okay. Um, at 061-283-5099. Um, you can also just call to confirm whether uh, the business opportunity that you want to mm-hmm. participate in is considered as an illegal financial okay. scheme or not. Okay. Um, don't call after <laughs> you have participated, yes. <laughs> but do call before to confirm because it also makes our mm. job easier um, just to advise you on whether the business opportunity that you're mm. looking at is actually legitimate okay. or not. Thank you so much, Uwetha. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Uwetha Njambi, Senior Financial Analyst at Bank of Namibia.